The next law of motion that we're going to look at um, among the series of laws from Newton is, of course, the second law of motion. And this one is probably the most famous of the three. And, of course, everybody remembers it as the equation F equals MA. So, indeed, if you see the equation F equals MA, which is probably the most famous equation in physics, that one and maybe E equals MC squared from Einstein, it's probably a battle between those two. But if you see F equals MA, you're looking at Newton's second law of motion. And if we read it in text, paraphrased here, it says the acceleration experienced by an object is proportional to the magnitude of the force and inversely proportional to the magnitude or the, the mass of the object. So if we take F equals MA and we rewrite it as the acceleration is equal to F over M, which is the exact same equation that's written differently, then we realize that the acceleration depends on the force proportionally. So if we double the force, we get twice acceleration. And inversely proportional to the mass. So if we double the mass, we only get half the acceleration. So I try to illustrate that here. So here we have a mass, mass M. We apply a force, called let's call it force 1, push to the right, and it results in a certain acceleration of that object. If we now double the force, F2, which is twice the original force, we would expect double the acceleration. But if we double the mass of the object, we use the same force as we did initially, then we only get half the original acceleration. So that's what we mean what, with the, the acceleration is proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. But we need to understand this a little bit more. For example, let's say we have the same object right here. Let's say it has mass m, and in this case it has zero acceleration, even though there are two forces pushing on it. There's a force 1 pushing on it from the left, there's a force 2 pushing on it from the right. So plenty of forces acting on the object, but zero acceleration? Why is that? Well, in this case, it turns out that these two forces cancel each other out. They're equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction, so they cancel each other out. I guess I'll have to make this one just slightly bit longer to make sure that they're the same length. There we go. And so the net force equals zero. So what we can say here is F net is equal to zero. And if there's no net force on an object, then there will be no acceleration. So really what we should write here is we should call this the net force on the object because it's very possible that all kinds of forces are acting on the object and yet there will not be an acceleration because all the forces cancel out. So in our last example here, we can look at it and say we have a mass sitting on a table. What would be the acceleration of that? And of course, you already know from experience, if you, let's say you put a book on the table, that book is not going to accelerate. But there's forces acting on the book. Well, so let's find out. It looks like a physics book, doesn't it? Look how thick it is, over a thousand pages. Anyway, what are the forces? Well, by all means, there is the force of gravity pushing down, and so we have the force due to gravity, which is equal to the mass times acceleration due to gravity, so we can write it like that. And of course, then there's an opposing force, and we'll talk about it in our ne next video, the reaction force pushing back up. Let me use a different color for that. So we have the reactionary force, we call that the normal force which is equal in magnitude but in opposite in direction to the weight. So those two forces cancel each other out. So even though, again, there are two forces acting on it, there is, again, no acceleration. So here we can say acceleration equals zero because there's no net force acting on the object. So whenever we're dealing with Newton's second law, make sure we look at it in terms of are there net forces acting on the object. If there's no net force, there's no acceleration. So. From now on, we can, we can be assured that if there's zero net force, there's zero, zero acceleration. And the corollary, if an object is accelerating, then there must be some net force acting on it. And that, in turn, is Newton's second law.